So, hello there, everybody. Today, um, I'll do a short stream, a short video um, about something different than flying. Um, it's not exactly typical for me, since I try to avoid tweaking as much as possible. That's the main reason why I switched uh, to explain, because um, I want to spend my time with the sim um, mainly flying and not uh, dealing with uh, issues or tweaking the hell out of <laughs> the software. But I um, came across this tweak I want to show you here. Um, yeah, at a uh, few forums, the typical forums I um, visit frequently, so it's not uh, something I discovered. Uh, just read about it and uh, gave it a try. Um, first, it was only, only about cloud shadows, which already made me complete freak, completely freaking out because I always said or I al always thought that cloud shadows are really important to give uh, the simulator uh, uh, um, the depth, uh, the depth it needs to create a really realistic look, and all the simulators lacked. Um, all the Microsoft uh, simulators, flight simulators, lacked uh, that feature. So, um, yeah, while the scenery can look really good, the depth that is needed to create a really immersive look isn't there. But that's just my opinion. And uh, when I tried Explain 9 for the first time, I was really amazed about these cloud shadows. Uh, and for some reason, um, they seem to be they seem to be gone with the release of Explain 10, but the truth is that they've been all always been there, and here's a way to bring them back or to pronounce them again to make them more intense and to do a few other neat things that just make the look of Explain 10 really amazing. So, without any further ado, let's jump into it. What you see here is um, my Explain 10 um, Coronado, Coronado B-58 aircraft sitting on the runway of Lugano Airport. It's stock scenery um, with OSM Europe plus Autogen and um, HD Mesh version 2 plus the tree lines and farms in version 2. But other than that, nothing tweaked here. That's the complete default lighting system of Explain 10 and the way it looks. Yeah. Okay. This video is about a tool or plugin called Dada Ref Editor. Maybe you've already heard about it. Um, it's a real neat tool that lets you um, tweak different settings um, concerning the art controls and much more stuff inside X-Plane. It's actually a tool for developers, but it works, once you get a hang of it, um, it works really flawlessly. And you can change values on the fly, so no need to tweak a, a, a certain thing, restart the simulator and all that stuff. You can do it on the fly and it's really nice. So, f um, first of all, I want to show you some pictures how the sim looks in this B-58 around Lugano Airport with the tweaks applied. I mean, it's a total different look. You have a more pronounced atmospheric scattering effect with a kind of bluish horizon. Here you see it from a flight level. It really looks amazing. Even the, the scenery in the distance seems to uh, plant better um, to the sky, looks more realistic. Look at that, I mean, I really just freaked out first time I flew over this scenery. It's just amazing. Look at that detail see in the valley. You can see the cloud shadows working there as well, because here everything is bright and shiny, and down there you have the the realistic shadows uh, the clouds cast. I mean, that's the way it looks in, in in real life. Right. Look at that. I mean, it's simply amazing. It blew me away, to be absolutely honest. 
it's just outstanding here another nice shot of the the, the cloud shadows here everything is bright in the distance everything is bright and there you have the cloud shadows working underneath the plane as well yeah it's just beautiful so you can or you first of all you need a um, plugin called data ref editor just open your internet browser of choice and google for the tool data ref editor um, oh wait maybe add download yeah here we go just uh, seek for data ref editor download and uh, you'll see a link direct into the um, xquarkbox.net internet site data ref editor explain SDK it belongs to the software development kit of explain and if you hit that link you're more or less uh, presented the the direct the the, the um, download link just download it uh, download it it's a it's a um, it's not too big it's a zip file unzip it and as always with plugins the plugin belongs into your explain output uh, sorry resources plugins folder and there you see mine data ref editor so it's the the main folder explain 10 resources plugins just drag it there and then uh, you s when you start um, explain and go to the plugins menu you have the no new ent entry and it's called data ref editor there are um, several points within this um, what's going on there are several um, choices what we want to take a look at uh, and what's most important to get that realistic look and scenery is the second one show art controls so go to plugins data ref editor and choose show art controls so here you see a lot of things going on all these entries are the art controls that can be altered there are so many other things you can change in their settings uh, concerning the water and the clouds and stuff but uh, as I said in the beginning I don't want to spend too much time with tweaking and so there are in total one two three four five six entries I like to change in order to get a completely new looking sim okay first thing I normally change are the cloud shadows so there is a uh, entry called clouds slash cloud shadow lighten ratio and by default this value is 0 0.5 and then a few zeros again and if you want to change a value you just click on that line on that value it becomes blue and then you can just edit it like with any uh, text editor and stuff and normally I change that setting to 8.8 8 or yeah, sometimes 8.5 let's take 8.8 .8 here and then I hit enter and you already may have seen that the look of the sim changed let's close the data ref editor for now and have a look at the sim now so obviously we have quite many clouds in the sky right now and you can see in the distance where there are less clouds we have some part of the scenery is still bright where the sun shines onto the hills so let's take a look at this from a higher altitude yeah here you can see it many clouds right now in the sky so not too many bright spots here's a one here's a one but it looks just amazing look here at the distance it's it blew me away the first time I saw that maybe you would just um, change the weather let's say a few cumulus weeks uh, uh, clouds yeah have a look right now so more bright spots here you have this huge shadow cast by a cloud in the sky and yeah the other areas here around the airport are bright that's beautiful 
as simply love it. Okay, but that's just where the fun starts. Guys, so let's get into the .rf editor once more. .rf editor, show art controls. And another neat feature of that thing is that you can <coughs> excuse me, search for a keyword. Uh, we will change some settings within the atmospheric scattering. So we look for a keyword called Atmo. And if I type that in, only the Atmo um, entries come up and we'll um, change some values in there. The first is the Atmo Scale Relief and I um, change the 13 into 30. You can recognize directly that you get a um, deeper blue in the sky. Okay, so we just go on here and change the inscale again, me, whatever it's <laughs> pronounced, M-I-E, and usually I take a value of 5 in there. That uh, makes for a um, yeah, more washed out look in the distance, more atmospheric scattering effect, more pronounced. And the relief setting underneath, I normally change it from 1 to 7, which even more pronounces the, the scattering effect. And then there you have uh, three um, quite similar entries, scatter relief for B, G and R, which is obviously blue, green and red. And normally I only touch the blue value and change that quite dramatically from here 19 to 55. Okay. And when I now get rid of the window again and we take another look, the sim looks completely different doesn't it? I mean the mountains and the, the scenery in the distance get gets that nice bluish effect. It just looks amazing. And <laughs> that combined with the cloud shadows, I mean look at that. Here the, the hills in the distance, the mountains are are a little darker because they are obviously under some clouds. I mean look at that. That's really complete different look. I love it. And it works, once you get a hang of it, it works, just takes a couple of seconds. Problem is, the values that you change within the DataRef editor uh, won't be saved. So anytime you restart explain, the values are back to normal, so you have to change them again with every start. There is a way of using a LUA, Lua script, but you have to, to uh, create that script for every plane. Uh, but that script leads to um, the fact that the settings you changed uh, are being load loaded with the uh, plane you choose. You can do that. There are many entries on the, on the forums. Um, but, you know, that's already too much for me. I don't want to program stuff. I want an, an easy solution. And once you get a hang of it, I mean, seriously, it's done within seconds. I mean, look at that. That nice bluish effect in the distance. Wow. The way the mountains, the look of it, of, of them get washed, gets washed out in the distance. The bluish look of the atmosphere, uh, the atmospheric effect. The shadows here on the hills. It's really, really outstanding. Very powerful tool. Data Ref Editor. And one uh, more thing. I can only recommend um, you to, to give the try. I'm using the default clouds. There's a great tool. I already use it a lot. It's uh, called SkyMax Pro, but the problem is that the cloud shadows don't work uh, with um, these clouds. They only work with the default clouds of x 10. Um, that is very important. So if you use Carmex Pro, the cloud shadow feature won't work. Um, other than that, it's um, really important to mention that only with HDR enabled, let's take a quick look at the rendering options here, and all that stuff like a drop pixel per lighting and atmospheric scattering, these things have to be enabled in order to make the tweaks I just show you um, 